Hi, I'm Dwayne Nichol, Senior Technology Evangelist for Adobe Systems. Today on Adobe Developer Connection, we're going to take you through creating a brand new project that will create a service call, grab some XML and work with it in a couple of different views in a mobile application. Now this is a fairly common thing and there's some pitfalls that you'll have to avoid when you start doing this. So let's go through it, start the project and see how it works, shall we? What you see on my screen now is a list of very, very fine French and Italian wines on my home page. Now this is an XML format and I'm going to copy the URL for this as we're going to use it. And what we're going to do is create a mobile application using the new Flash Builder 4.5 uh, burrito build with the new, for, the, uh, new uh, SDK. So right from scratch we're going to create a new Flex mobile project and I've got the Blackberry plugin for this so this is going to be a very very cool uh, project because it will run in both the Blackberry Playbook tablet as well any Google Android device so I can write one set of code or one instance of the code that will run on multiple devices fairly well. So it also gives me the choice to do uh, automatic reorientation of screens, etc. So we're finished with that. I'm going to drag up my window at the bottom and we're going to connect to a data service. But before we do this, uh, I want to just go through how the mobile application structure works, the general architecture. The general architecture for mobile applications works on a system where you have a series of views and you also have a header area. So we have this t area at the top of the application that doesn't move very much and below it are views and there can be many different types of content in the top area as well of a uh, Flash Builder 4.5 mobile applications. Now at the time we're recording this some of these terms may change so try not to be too specific with it. The one that takes up the most space is called the View Navigator and how we generally work with these applications is you have a view and when you take an action on a certain view it registers an intent. It goes through Google's intent filter in the Android operating system and this may result in another view being shown. In this case uh, if we click on the slash.rss item we may get the view that is uh, currently being shown um, delegated to dev null and getting the new one in. Now this will also uh, work with items that are in the top of the application itself. So we've looked at the, the architecture a little bit. Let's now connect to a data service and start working with this directly. So first thing I'm going to do is hit the URL that I just showed you and uh, this will go out and I'll invoke this and it returns an array of objects. So I'm going to take the vintage node uh, and this will return an array that contains several sub-sections sub, uh, of it. So we've created the XML service. The next thing I'm going to do is configure the return, time, the return type for this. Now again, I'm going to have to put in a, uh, the URL to get and this will go out and come back and ask me you know, which context uh, root I want. So in this case, uh, wines was the root element of the XML, vintage is the second one. So I'm going to choose vintage and it's correctly guessed that there were five sub objects underneath of it of type string and uh, it hasn't detected any of them are arrays so you could subtype these at this point even further if you wanted to but we're going to leave it as, uh, as done. Now what's important to note is that we have a vintage type. Now for the mobile application to be able to display it I'm going to lay a list out and I'm going to go into the design perspective for this and the uh, mobile applications because they can reorient what we want to do is bind the top and bottom to various uh, places in the application. In this case we're going to give values of 0 and 0 for each one of these because we want it whether it's in the uh, landscape or uh, portrait mode to always take up 100% of the screen. So now we have our list. The last thing to do is to generate a service call and when we generate the service call we can now put this onto our list just by simply dragging and dropping it and what we're going to do is uh, select vintage type and this is the array that comes back and we're going to have to select a label field so we could take any one of these. I like to personally pick which wine I want to know more about by the uh, name of the wine so we're going to leave it at name and say OK and at this point we can run the application 
and it will emulate because I've got the BlackBerry uh, tablet emulator. I can actually uh, tell it to launch on the desktop emulator and emulate a BlackBerry playbook and this is uncannily accurate. So here we go and you can see that we have the uh, wine list showing. So within a minute we've already got the names of the wines coming back. Now there's a number of things we can do up here. So we can rotate the device left, rotate the device right. Um, if we were to do something with this uh, we could also navigate the view stack backwards and forwards. Okay let's add some more logic to it now. <clears throat> so we've got a list down here in the code. What I want to do is add a change event handler on it and generate the event handler itself. Now this list change handler is going to send the event uh, which is the index change event up here and this will be able to tell us what we have. So we'll create a variable within this protected function and the variable will be called wine and we're just going to generically type it to object right now. And this new wine variable will queue off the list and you can see here the ID of the list at the bottom. Uh, the list's uh, data provider and then we're going to take the get item at oops, and then we're going to have to feed it the index. Now the index of this will be queued off the event. So there's when an event happens, an index change event, there's a new index event that uh, is available and they tell us which one of the items on the RSS on the uh, list displaying the XML uh, has been clicked on. That's very important for this. Now what we're going to do is create a new view and look at the details of this. So to do this we're going to the views package and we'll create a new MXML component and this one we'll just call details and finish and we're going to go back to call from the list change handler uh, function, the navigator, and we're going to push a view, and we're going to push the view called details which we've created, and we're also going to send it data. In this case we're going to send it the wine. So the wine is the object that will come into this. Now if we go to this um, new details view we have, we should have some sort of logic here to deal with the incoming uh, object. So what I will do is first create a script block what I'm going to do is create some uh, bindable variables and the bindable variables will hold some of the uh, items that we want from the RSS. So we had one that was name and I'm going to use it uh, directly and there was basically five items in our original RSS feed so I'm going to duplicate this. This is a great little trick if you hold down command alt and push the down, area, down arrow this will happen. So the second one will be the uh, vintner who is the person who makes the wine, the price of the wine and then we have the Parker notation so we'll create a variable called Parker and the last one will be the vintage, the year in which the wine was made. <coughs> now I'm going to set up a new function called init and this will happen on view activate and there's warnings I'm going to add on later about this. The view activate event happens in the architecture of the application when that view becomes the active view. Now sometimes it's good to queue things off of this but as you can see later we'll show you how this could actually be very harmful coding practice and we'll show you a best practice for doing service calls remotely. So I'll now run down and build my init function. And this will return nothing. And what I'm going to do is now create a member variable for init and it will be called this wine which will be the specific wine and now we're going to type it. Now if you remember from the value objects we generated the vintage type is the type we want to do and you see here that it's actually built the import statement at the top. 
so we've got um, this vintage, this new variable called this wine, which is of type vintage type, which is a type we want to work with coming in. Um, we've got data being passed off, but how do we bind the two together? And the key word here is data. So we're going to use data as, and then, as you probably already guessed, vintage type. And this will cast the data being passed to this view as this. Now what I want to do is take the name and the vintner and the price and the Parker notation and lastly the vintage and we're going to queue these and set their values off of this wine's ob this wine as an object. So for the name, we're going to take the name, which is of type string. For the vintner, we'll take the vintner, which is the original uh, XML name given to this. And for the price, you guessed it. Parker notation will be assigned to the value of Parker. And last but not least, we'll take the vintage, which is the year the wine was made. So we now have these variables. Let's give it a quick test. And we have at the top the title of it. So let's make the title name. Now I just run into what uh, appears to be a conflict of namespaces and I'm going to leave it in and we're just going to call this name one just to avoid this conflict and hopefully this error will disappear. Okay, let's run this and see how it works on the emulator. So when we click one of these, we'll look at the Petrus. It comes through and it comes to this area over here. Now I've put name one in, I've made a mistake in my logic. I really wanted to bind the name to the variable rather than static text. So I'll run that again. And we click on the Petrus, we'll see that we have already extracted the Petrus name from the top of this. So our Wines application is almost complete right now. All I'm going to do is add a few labels onto the uh, application, space them out a little bit. Uh, I'm not going to do this so they look nice and neat, but we'll just bind the value of those labels to the application. Then I want to show you something really important with the networking feature turned on. So I'll switch back to the design mode. and I'm going to throw in a couple of labels. So I'll stretch them out a little bit. and. I'll cut it and paste it, and uh, paste another one, and paste another one. So we've already used the name at the top, it's bound. So these labels down here for the first text uh, will bind this to a variable. In this uh, case, we'll say the vintner. The second one will bind to the price and this one will bind to the Parker notation and last but not least the vintage. Now this is ready to run. Now before we do this I'm going to turn on the network monitor and there's a reason I want you to see this. Let's run the application again. Now let's take a look at the Gaia Contessa. We can see the details now appear on this application. We can see down here in the network monitor that we have a uh, request and response object uh, for this particular call. But watch what happens now when we navigate back, when we go device back. If we go down to the network monitor, you can see that it's actually made another call to the service. Now architecturally, this is very, very bad for a mobile application. You don't want every time somebody switches back and forth between views to actually have this call being made and then have also the CPU cost of reparsing all of the material that comes back. In this case, it's XML. It might not be too big of a list, but you shouldn't have to do it. 
There is a destruction policy that you can put on a view, and the destruction policy allows you to say that uh, you want to preserve the view, and this will preserve the uh, view, but then we have to figure out a new way to call the make the initial call. So what we're going to do is make this on application complete instead and call it from the high level application container, not from the particular view, and then cause the destruction policy to be uh, persisted so that we don't have to make the call. Let's go back to the code. So here we are back in the uh, Wines XML home file, and you can say that right now the queue for making the call to get the wines, uh, get the wine data, is queued off the creation complete of the list. Now this will uh, persist every time, or this will happen every time this is called. So what I'm going to do is change the destruction policy to none from auto. So now we're going to run this again and keep your eyes on the network monitor at the bottom. So we'll go to one of these. I'll look at the uh, other Contessa, which is another fine Gaia. And we'll go back. And you can see we can switch back and forth between views. And we're not seeing any additional service calls being made. So this is just one of many enhancements or architectural things you have to worry about as a developer for the mobile space. By doing one little thing on our uh, first view, we've actually saved somebody's cell phone bill from a lot of data incursion fees. And we've also saved them from chewing through their battery life by doing extra CPU cycles. So this is Dwayne Nickel for the Adobe Developer Connection. If you want the source code for this, it's at the URL at the bottom of your screen. Uh, please try this at home. It's a lot of fun. I'm getting addicted to mobile development. Peace, love, and may your code compile on the first go.